what up guys welcome back to another episode of the barbell brigade talk show i'm with silent mike tim kennedy here since you train to literally be a weapon what is your recovery po- protocol like do you like ice bath do you like sauna they say cbd fixes you like, the whole world you like massages you like cbd I don't know. You're rubbing CBD. I don't know. <laughs> I've done the pots before. You can tell I've never used CBD. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not like a recovery guy. You're not. No. How do you? How do you like get ready for the next day? Just your body just gets perfect the next day. Do you sleep know. in a tube or something? Oh, no, you like um, have sex. Okay. You've been talking about sex a lot. That is important. It's a very good recovery tool. It's super important. I think it like resets everything in your brain. What about? Was oh, that the post nut clarity that's happening? Yeah, you that's count. the secret to recovery is post not clarity. No, like yeah, post not clarity, but um, it like you get that in, endorphin serotonin dump, right? Yeah. Um, and like, do you get better sleep after one badass sesh sesh with you know your partner? Does it matter if it's by yourself or with a partner? Maybe I don't the, think you can have a badass sesh yeah, by yourself. You've never seen me by myself. <laughs> Yeah. Just be lighting candles, the just cranking hours and hours. I think it's important that you're getting the pheromones from, uh, you know, in my, in my case, my wife. Yeah. The uh, mm. like that's that's important. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. skin to skin contact, like mm. all those things. And you know, after a couple of good workouts that day, and you know, being in the office for like eight ten hours, maybe going to the range, um, and then like have this badass dinner and then like this badass sesh and then it's like man i sleep so hard what about before is there any preparation for the hard work i'm not i'm off the sex oh, i'm not okay. i'm not talking foreplay <laughs> i'm talking uh, yeah. to get ready to work out so f- good food good sex yeah. good sleep what about like just before something important maybe even a mission or what is there any prep there a coffee i love or... um so like inflammation and pain management i like cold um, like cold plunges and um, ice for dealing with, you know, pain, injury, inflammation. Is that more for like as needed, or do you, are you like ritualist? Like some people do it every single day. I, I like. I mean, I like it. I enjoy it. I it see. feels good um, to to just sit there. It's like some people meditate, whatever. For for me, that's like I'm doing something cr- crazy, terrible. You know, it's forty degrees. I'm sitting there for five, six minutes, and um, like you're staying mentally active enough because if you don't you just start like shivering and focusing on how cold it is yeah. what are you doing singing a song or i'm just like thinking about i'm actually like thinking about all the stuff i'm gonna do the moment i get out you know i'm like uh it, i'm like aligning how efficient i'm gonna be for the next couple hours yeah like scheduling yeah, yeah and i'm like so, sometimes even working through some problems that i'm gonna have to address when i get out you know like a call that i have to do um sometimes uh like the tough calls that you don't want to do, those are the ones that I do immediately. Boss calls. After. Yeah. Yeah. Where I'm like, hey man, I yeah. got bad news for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You suck. <laughs> what about like uh when you're overseas and you know you can't pick your missions? Sometimes they're like back to back to back to back. Have you ever felt a point where it felt like your body's about to break, your your mind is about to break, or you just feel super burnt out? Like how do you do you have any recovery protocols for that? The community is a big part. Like the brotherhood um is one of the many reasons I love jujitsu is the community aspect to it. You know, like la- last night we had 50 people on the mat. You know, there's like 13 year old little girls and seven year old men that were all on the mat. And you know, like the little girls training with their mom, you know, and they're like giggling and, and, and having fun as they're trying to like choke each other, right? And <laughs> yeah. there's like old dude that had hip surgery is over there and like he's being really tr- methodical and slow, making sure not to get injured. Like everybody gets up and like pumped and happy. And there's this, this huge spectrum of from joy to struggle to laughter to like crying is that like a, you know a, a girl fails in in one of the competitions that she's doing in our training mat, and, and that happens in the military where like all the things that I'm struggling with I can I can voice those and I can air those and it's not like this fake stoic tough masculine bravado where I'm like yeah there's nothing bothering me I'm like man that sucked you know like that hurt. Yeah. You know, and uh, I'm like, yeah, let's go work out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll sweat it out of us. And it's almost as if, like, because you guys were on the same wavelength, that workout, being together in that community is like the recovery and the therapy session for yeah. that. The, the Independence Fund, it's a, it's a nonprofit. Um, they have a bunch of different 
programs, but one, one of them is incredible. Uh, it's like Operation Resilience. They, they take a combat unit that got messed up in combat and they bring them all back together. Wow. And it saves people's lives. Yeah. Sure. You know, like they, they experience these things together and they are able to endure them and survive them because they were together, but then they're separated, like both geographically and emotionally and psychologically. And, um, and, and that, that feeling of isolation and that depression and sometimes you know, substance abuse starts slipping in there as that slippery slope of mental health starts de declining. Um, then they bring them back together and it's like, it's just boom, right back there, right? They're together again and they get to work through these problems again. They get to air their struggles. Um, and uh, like I have seen it save lives. Every single Friday, I wish you're here um, this Friday we do veterans jujitsu on our mats. We have a hundred people on our at Grace Hill Minus Cedar Park, and uh, firefighters, police officers, and a ton of veterans on there. And like, there's times where we've had guys come in and be like, "I was thinking about killing myself last night, and I didn't to be here for jujitsu, and now this world looks so bright. Mm. You know, like t like today's a new day. Like I cannot wait for tomorrow." I don't know it was in that moment of crisis last night, and the thing that brought me to today was jujitsu, and uh, and I so like that community is so important, and and um, that's part of recovery too. One of the biggest things I've gotten from hanging out with you all day is uh, how positive you turn everything, um, and two is how holistic you look at everything. Because like you said, I think the outside world or people that don't do what you do because you do extreme things always just see this bravado. Oh really? Look, rip your blood off. But you, <laughs> but you're you're you know, like the first thing you did is stab Bart in the neck. For, <laughs> but uh, but like community is so important, and I think honestly, what's wrong with America as a whole and the thing we need to fix is community because we're so spread out. We have no, we don't know our neighbors, we don't know our schools, we don't know our teachers, um, and that's what I love about powerlifting because although it's uh, comes about a different way than jujitsu, is the community in powerlifting so special that you're cheering on somebody yeah. even though they're your competitor. Um, and I, I think that alone can fix so much. Powerlifting competitions, not the dude that's lifting the weight. You look at his team yeah. Yeah. and around him. Yeah. And they're like, go! Yeah. Like their veins yeah. are bulging. You're yeah, like, yeah. And they're like. Or they're, even their family members that don't lift. It's crazy. Yeah, screaming, you just end up screaming for some reason. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing. It, and it's that same thing. It's just community. community. It's No, it's two things. It's health yeah. and community. Yeah, yeah, through there's, movement. There's through two struggle. things happening, yeah. right? They're. Yeah, yeah. They're enduring tough and challenging things. Yeah. They're looking at their diets. They're doing exercise, yeah. and then they're doing it. You know, they're sweating, and they're doing it with a community. Yeah. That's the magic, man. That's yeah. the recipe. But You're you don't. You, you. The only reason the community works is because you know the struggle. What it's like. Although Bart's lifting six hundred pounds, and I'm doing five fifty, but it's our absolute max. We both know the pain yeah. of, an, of absolute an absolute max. max. Yeah. Have you ever uh, seen or been offered? A recovery in the form of a syringe? I have off been offered that countless times. And then was it in you... like a serum like Captain America? Or was it like in the alleyway? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Both. <laughs> in a brown paper bag. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like uh I'm not gonna throw stones at anybody. Yeah. Um as a professional athlete, I followed the rules. I see. And would never consider it. And as a father, I knew that someday, just like my dad told me, he's like, I was an elite athlete. I did it clean and you can too. And I know that my son is gonna be a freak athlete. He is a freak athlete. And I'm gonna to have to tell him that I fought my entire professional career of 18 years and I did it clean. Fought for the world title two times, you know, like title eliminators in the UFC, uh, main events in the UFC, and I did it clean. Um, I also had teammates that didn't. Um, that's their choice, that's their morality and that's their ethics and that's their integrity that's not mine i'm not going to judge them and similarly in the military there were guys that you know i was young the first time that i was going to combat and i was judging these guys that um were using steroids for recovery and um but they, sometimes that's a little bit easier to understand because that's like a life or death they situation. had to go out the next night yeah you know like i'm a 25 year old top 10 in the world elite athlete yeah and uh and he's a 40 year old guy that's been on the team for 12 years. Yeah. You know, and we're about to hit a target the second night in a row, and then we have a follow on target, and then we have a follow on target, right? And then our air gets kinked, and we have to foot it out of there. Like, he's going to die. Yeah. So, again, it took a little bit of time and grace to figure out for me, for my family, um, I like being 
a healthy, clean athlete. That's very, very cool. Do you have any vices like cigars or beers or whatever? Or just clean, clean? I like coffee. But I think that coffee is super good for you. Yeah. Um, it's super good for your brain. I love, I'm like a... Any brand you recommend, you think? <laughs> yeah, what brand should we yeah, try yeah, next? Yeah. Black Rifle Coffee is pretty fantastic. Oh, okay, okay. Um, like, we, I mean, like, there's, well, I'm in Austin. Right, right, right now, you go down to four, four blocks that way, you got Cuvée Coffee, owned by Mike McKim. And uh, both his kids go to a, went to the Naval Academy, or one went to the Naval wow. Academy, the other went to West Point. You know, like he, he's a, a Navy veteran. So, like, there's, and it is badass coffee. That's right here. Um, you know, and then we could uh, you, you go to Medici's. That's three blocks that way. Like from where we're sitting, there's some of the best coffee in the world that's imported to Austin because they're like we're kind of snooty here. Yeah. Um, good food is uh, a vice. Hunting's a vice. Doing um, doing dumb things that'll get get me killed or you know, like skydiving, scuba diving, little adrenaline, riding motorcycles. Yeah, like adrenaline's definitely. But nice. all very like holistic, healthy like recovery tools and it's like almost more internal rather than external seeking. yeah what puts you in like a good mental spot yeah sleep yeah. i think is one thing that the oh, world my favorite. Will on. so important and there's so many just studies that talking about people struggling with weight obviously movements number yeah. one but if you don't sleep good your hunger cues are off the richter yeah like even me and i'm a fitness professional oh. if i sleep five hours versus my normal seven or eight i'm begging for mcdonald's we, we, we've been like jacking up our circadian rhythm with our devices and our like it is really clear the way that our brain works yeah. and genetically we are built a very specific way and we have been interrupting it for this past generation and we have the most obese generation in the history and we need to do something when i say in the history i'm saying in the history of mankind yeah and uh like put your freaking phones down after 6 p.m get up early when the sun comes up Start turn off lights when the sun goes down, and you know get an exercise. I'm big anti recovery also, and I talk a lot of shit on a lot of people in a lot of companies. And I'm telling you all out there, none of you, me included, train ten percent as hard as this guy. Yeah. And if he recovers with sleep, a little bit of, a little bang bang, a little bit of a little bit of pom pom. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys will be okay without all your fucking trash mechanisms y'all trying to use. Yeah, like, I like massage guns. You know. Yeah, yeah, I, sure. I like, but, but you like. Yeah, I like. You don't need. No, it's not. It's not it. made you. No, like, I got a fancy one, the well body that has like a heated tip. You know, like. Whoa. And, is that uh, for the pump pump? Yeah. Is that for the pump? <laughs> and like af afterward, like a, a bad workout, or like tomorrow, if I don't have to fly out first thing in the morning, I'm gonna go box. You know, when I get done boxing, like my rear delts are sore, and uh, scapula is a little bit sore, and like like. Sure. Uh, yeah. Cool. I'm gonna go work out again. You told us you like a little pool dip after yeah. training. Yeah. You saw me today. I got yeah. done with a little yeah. workout, and the girl comes out. She's like, "Hey, are you, are you gonna be in the pool a long time?" I'm like, "No, I'm just hanging out in here just because <laughs> it feels good." Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, like earn your recovery first of all. The vast majority of people that start talking about recovery, you don't deserve it. You haven't earned it. You haven't done enough work to need it. So, like, focus on the work first, and then we can talk about the recovery. But yeah, it's it is like way down the list of the important things that you need to worry about to try to be a freak athlete. Um, where can they find you and all the good stuff that you do? I mean, the worst places on the planet usually. <laughs> True. So that's uh, what about online? Yeah, we'll start with the internet. The internet's safe. The internet is safe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Internet oh, is yeah, safe. oh yeah. the internet's safe. Is well, that what you're yeah. saying? It's safer than what you do. <laughs> yeah. uh, t the Instagram is Tim Kennedy MMA. YouTube is like Tim Kennedy. Um, it's all Tim Kennedy. Something. Google Tim Kennedy. Yeah, but all verified over the place. things. There are so many. Uh, I don't know anymore. You got oh, 9.99 yeah, and yeah. you're a god on the you internet. Know, I, think, I think I got like. Like backdoored in something because like I still excuse got excuse me yeah I still got the <laughs> check thing but I've never paid. We'll see. I don't know. So Tim Kennedy everywhere. Just That's look. it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys. See you guys next time.